Have you ever wondered in Figma how to do GIFs like this without having to completely leave the app? So maybe making something a bit like this, or maybe something like this, or even just a little bit of movement like this. So it's so simple to jump into Figma and build out these little kind of um, frame by frame movement GIFs. GIFs, GIFs, however you say it, I say GIFs. Um, so I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. It's super easy. Honestly, before I used to, if you see my old tutorial, kind of build things in Canva, then export it, pull it in. But for these really simple ones where I just want just a little bit of pop, a little bit of movement, so easy to do it in Figma. So let's jump right in. Okay, so I pulled a few of those email designs that I just showed here directly in Figma, as you can see. So the great thing about building these within Figma itself is that you can quickly make adjustments, look at the preview, see how it looks without having to like constantly like go back out and re-import it in and da da da. So honestly, this is like my preferred way to do it. So let's start with this first one. This is gonna be like your easiest type of gift to make. You have maybe a window here that you want to fill in with different images. And then with those images, just have a little bit of movement or maybe we're just swapping the two images or even what I love is that you could even just move some elements around just to see a little bit of a flicker of something. So let me show you exactly how to do that. So let's say I'm building this from scratch over here. So I'm gonna come over and build a frame. So normally in Figma, I build in a 600 width frame. That's the pretty much typical frame size when you're importing it into email marketing programs. So I'm just gonna kind of draw this down the length of where I want my GIF to be. So you can see like, yeah, if I had to kind of line it up, I plan for it to be about this size here, right? So we'll call this like frame one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and kind of start making sure it matches with the surroundings of where it's going to fit into. So with this one in particular, we're gonna have this background color. Um, we have these star elements that we can bring in too that we kind of have sprinkled around. So I'm gonna pull that in as well. And then where we want our image, and this is where you can really get customized. In this particular one, I dropped in a um, rectangle like so, and then coming in and just curving the edges make it a bit more curved. And then we have our little star here and I'm just going to move that up above. And you can customize this in any way that you want. So, you know, I'm just kind of throwing in some stars like I have in my original, but this could be edited and customized any way you want. I will say, be careful with spacing. So already I'm kind of seeing that like my spacing is really kind of large, like this kind of padding right here. So I'm gonna just bring this in. So that way it's like my GIF exists like exactly center and in between there's not too much spacing because you would hate if you build this and then you put it in you're like okay wait the spacing here just doesn't line up so we kind of want to go with what's kind of happening over here and then we're going to pop in our images so um i'm just gonna kind of grab some random images that i have and pop it in so i come over to the image and video tool and i actually have another client that's in the jewelry space so we'll just pop in a jewelry image here so say we have this image and keep everything the same you want to make sure over here clip content is selected. Why? Because with your frame, you just want to make sure if you add anything in, like just, it just kind of clips everything and it doesn't mess with your sizing. Because what you could do if this is selected, if this vector for some reason, like so, the box extends over, then your frame will export in like wonky sizes. So you want to make sure we do clip content and it is clipped, so that way when it's highlighted, you don't see it's expanding beyond this exact frame size. Super important. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, Command C, Command V, and it popped it all the way over here. So we're just gonna pop it over here. And this is gonna be frame number two. So we want this happening, and then we're popping into the next part. Be careful, you don't wanna adjust anything. You don't wanna move anything unless you want it to move. So now that we have kind of our set template here, we don't wanna move anything. If you decide later on that you want to adjust the stars, you wanna adjust the movement, honestly, you need to come back through, make your adjustments to the first frame, and then copy and repeat duplicate it so that way everything is frame perfect because what you don't want is when you export it you just see your star go ki, 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 and you didn't want that to happen right so let's go ahead and drop in another image and i'm sure i have another jewelry image here we can pop it okay great um and you know what let's why not let's throw in one more and let's grab one more image Okay, so in this particular example, we have three different images. Now we're imagining our finished GIF. We're going bop, bop, bop. It's kind of like swapping into the photos, which is what we want. 
So what we're gonna do is use a handy dandy tool. Now this tool technically is paid. I know, I know, everyone, I get it. But honestly, I haven't upgraded to Pro and I have like a full agency. <laughs> um, I probably will have to soon, but like the amount of like gifts I do with this and also when the other accounts of people on my team, we haven't needed a paid account, but I'm sure we may have to move into it soon. But just kind of calling that out that this next app is technically paid. It has a limit on how many free things you can do. So just calling that out. Okay, we are going to grab each frame. This is kind of an important step here. And over to export, we're gonna go ahead and do 2X and then that's it. We're not exporting anything, but we need to have our export settings set up. All right, and then we're gonna go over to plugins here, plugins and widgets, and there is a plugin here called Tiny Image Compressor. Let's go ahead and open that up. All right, and with Tiny Image Compressor up, it actually already saw that we had some exportable layers, which is what we set for these. So, which is great because it kind of eliminated step, but if you don't see these, it's because these are not set up as exportable. So that step I just did where I said, hey, export 2X, like you need to do that part or else it won't appear here. But we have our three here, woohoo. So we're gonna click create GIF and let me select my layers, select, 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 use the selected layers and we have our GIF. Okay, can I zoom in on this for you guys? I don't think I can, cause it's gonna, no. So hopefully this is, this is, I know it's kind of small. So here we can adjust our timing. So I usually go with like a 1200. It's fast, but not too fast and not too slow. So I go with like a 200. You can um, rearrange these. So let's you can move things around if you want a certain image first than the other. You can also export it at 2X. This is great if you notice you have some text compression. So, you know, in a GIF, it's always gonna be kind of uh, shrunken down. And if the text gets a bit blurry, you can export it at 2X and it just helps with some of that clarity, which is great. Quality adjustments. I mean, I don't, I really don't adjust anything besides the order and the timing. And we're gonna go ahead and click export GIF. So let's say in our design here, we'll go ahead and close that, that this is where our GIF was going to be. So I kind of outline things as well, like within the actual design piece, but we are gonna come over to our GIF pop it in. This is great if you have a client or you just want to like visualize how everything will be pulled together in the final piece. So let's say we kind of had everything like so. Perfect. And then ignore this big gap there. Let's go ahead and click preview and let's just see what this looks like. Does it flow together? Does it make sense? Um, and see. Ooh la la, our GIF is ready, woohoo! It's just as easy as that. And then you already have it exported, but let's say you're back in here and you're like, okay, I need to do the GIF again. Like, how can I export it? I honestly, instead of going back into Tiny Image Compressor, um, cause if you go to export this, it's gonna be like a PNG. So I go to plugins and then if you type in GIF, there is a GIF export and it usually exports it at just the same exact quality. So there you go, and it is exported. And just to show you another quick example, this I feel is such a simple and easy way just to add a little bit of flutter, a little bit of movement, just so it grabs people's attention. Like you don't have to have all these images popping through. You don't have to have the email doing flips and tricks. We just want a little bit of movement. So in this particular example, we have a GIF here where you can see it's just going beep, 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 beep. So um, I won't rebuild this from scratch, but just to show you, let's say we start in like an even playing field. Our boxes are here, then duplicate it. Then we're gonna go move it up, which this one was already moved up. These ones stay the same. Then go back, move it down, move this one up. Then move that down, move this one up. And it repeats and repeats and repeats. So if we had this one here, oops, let me grab my boxes, my frames, I mean. Make sure our export is set up. And then if we go to our tiny image compressor and it's exporting our, or finding our layers again. So we'll go ahead and do like so. Let's see, yes, export GIF. And we'll select again, da, da, da. And we can see our GIF movement and we could export it, put it into the email, as easy as that. So I hope this was super helpful guys. Just a simple way to make your images or your emails more impactful, have hopefully some higher click throughs happening with the movement you're adding in. Just adding in a little bit of zhuzh to your header section can really make an impact in the inbox. So hope this was helpful guys, bye.